right, so this is what we got. It's not really all that pretty, but I think I should be able to maybe make this work. All right, so today I thought I'd make a YouTube video, kind of give you guys an update and um, maybe do some interesting projects here, I guess. Interesting sort of project. So to update y'all, I got the adapter plate design ironed out. I got a starter mount all done. It's in, uh, it's being manufactured. It should be here in a couple weeks. Um, adapter plate is in progress. Not sure when that's gonna be done yet. Um, so I figured while I'm waiting, I can work on getting the design done for the motor mounts and eventually transmission mount too. But the, oh, the accessory brackets, those are being manufactured too. So hopefully a couple weeks for those as well. But, so today we're gonna to be working on um, trying to reverse engineer, or in other words, measure the motor mounts I had made previously. All we did to make these, I mean, initially I modeled something up, but it was, a little bit off whatever it's hard to measure anyway we ended up bolting this motor mount to the factory engine mount bracket and then um, bolted the plate to it bolted the plate to the engine and then we cut a my dad and I we cut a roll bar tube to fit it and tacked it in place welded it did the same thing for both sides so the left side's a little bit different than the right side so today I'm gonna try to see if I can 3D scan this thing with my Xbox 360 Connect scanner and then use that to model in uh, 3D and then redesign this thing a little bit because I think I wanna change a few things. So uh, we'll get the garage cleaned up here and then get the 3D scanner set up. So be right back. All right, garage is all clean. So, here's the motor mount, I'm gonna scan. The thought is, and I've never done this this way, but the thought is to suspend it, kinda like you're gonna paint it up in the air and then hopefully I should be able to get the 3D scanner around at multiple different angles because it's a little bit cumbersome. So, we'll see here in a second. This is the Connect scanner, there's a, uh, Software, it's like, I think 35 bucks, maybe 50 bucks at the most. Don't quote me on that exactly, but it's cheap. It's called Skinect with a K. S-K-A-N-E-T, I think. S-K, S-K-A-N-E-C-T. Sorry, butchered that pretty bad. So, I'll open that up and then Detecting sensor, sensor ready. And I mean, I'll give you fair warning with this software. You have to have a laptop with a pretty de decent graphics card and CPU in order to scan properly. I don't know how it is on these newer scanners. I've seen uh, some pretty, like I've seen some that'll connect to your tablet, for example, and they seem to do well. But yeah. I've tried this on my old laptop and it did not work out very well. This is like a pretty middle of the road uh, gaming laptop. It's nothing special, but it does the job. All right, so this is what we got. It's not really all that pretty, but I think I should be able to maybe make this work. Um, Painting it definitely did help the resolution. And I think I can pick up the bolt there, pick up the angle there, pick up the angle here, and then hopefully pick up those bolt hole positions. 
I can't remember if I made this plate to actual, like what I had designed it to. I'm pretty sure it did, but then again, might have just cut it out with a laser or a, a plasma torch. So, yeah, we'll see what this thing looks like compared to the model. So, the backstory is I already modeled this engine mount as like kind of a basis for the concept, and it's actually like pretty close. Um, let me unhide what this other, the original design looked like. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's pretty close. Like, all I did was I physically moved this thing around in space and then just free rotated it until I got it to kind of sort of line up. And then, um, what you can do, I found, is that Autodesk Inventor has got this nice tool to create planes. So you're just gonna come up here to planes and then you can click three points. And what that's gonna do is that allows you to select three points on a mesh, on a surface, whatever you want. And you're gonna try to pick the flattest surface and you can see that there's some error in this scan, for sure, as you could tell by how gritty and crappy it looks. Like this, really, I should go back and scan this thing, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and move forward with the design on this thing, because it doesn't hurt to 3D print it. What's gonna cost me? Five bucks and a little bit of time. But basically, you can create a plane off of three points, and that'll get you pretty damn close. Um, Especially for doing stuff like this where it doesn't have to be within microns. And you can see like looking at that thing from the side, it's a little bit off. So it's like this whole section here is still down a little bit lower. So let's try that again and we'll pick up one of those points over here and then try to see what this comes out at. And it's hard to probably pick it up on camera, but you can see where it's grayed out, where the plane is actually moving up either higher or lower than the surface. So the scan is not exactly showing that this is a flat surface. So, yeah, let's see. And that looks pretty good. And once again, you can still see that it's it's still picking up a little bit, but that looks pretty damn good. So all you can do if you are trying to design something like this is maybe draw a plane off of this, or you can use a software like Mesh Mixer to, uh, you can align your parts. Um, and you can, uh, this scan, there's no foreign bodies anywhere because I took my time and adjusted my window when I was scanning it. But a lot of times there's free bodies everywhere and you have to kind of like cut them off. And a lot of times it's really difficult to work with um, because there's so many little pixels. Like each one of these things is a pixel, a little triangle that's been meshed together and they're not exactly solid. A lot of times you can't really extrude them, um, but you can use them as like a, as like a sketch tool, like, It'd be the same as if you like took a picture, imported it in, and you traced the profile around. It's good enough for doing a lot of things like that. But let's just try this out and see how good these the position of these holes is. Um, I think that was a 10.5, and then all I'm doing is I'm just trying to find guesstimate where the center point of it, this hole is. So that's a little bit off. And once again, really, I should go back and scan this thing. But I know what this, I know what this bolt pattern is for this surface already because it bolts to the block and I've got a 3D model and you can find them all on the internet, on GrabCAD, all kinds of different um, websites. But let's just see what this comes out at just for demonstration purposes. A 
it definitely runs pretty slow when this uh, mesh is in here. There's just, like I said, lots and lots and lots of little details that they aren't really helpful. Um, hindsight 2020, like I said, you can paint the thing like a matte white and it's gonna be, it's gonna aid in scanning that thing very, it's gonna make the details a lot easier to pick up. So, I mean, like for example, this one, it looks like it's lined up pretty well with this slot. And this slotted design is what I'm gonna be moving forward with. That way you can have some adjustment to move the engine forward or backwards. Maybe this is, maybe these mounts can work in an Audi A6 or an Audi A8 or a B5, A4, who knows? So I think this doesn't hurt the structural integrity and it allows more flexibility or maybe you don't want to, maybe you can avoid Maybe you can avoid uh, relocating the fans, for example, or avoid uh, hammering out your transmission tunnel a little bit by cheating it forward a little bit, and you're okay with relocating the fans to the other side. This just gives it some more flexibility, essentially. So that's what I've kind of already done with this um, this plate. So, all right. So what I ended up doing was. After I had that model finished, um, I wanted to check the dimensions that I had measured versus the actual part. So I made this little jig, um, which just has the holes at nominal and the angles and everything. So then what that allowed me to do was put this on here, spin it around, and basically check the hole dimensions as they compared to the actual part. Um, I ended up making some adjustments to that thing and then realized that, oh shit, I have the engine offset to one side, so how do I know the distance between the two mounts? So what I did then is, since I knew that the angle of the actual Audi motor mounts was correct, what I did is I 3D printed some blocks and set them, bolted them into the Audi transmission and then use that, those two blocks to measure in between two known surfaces because those Audi motor mounts, not only are they the factory aluminum ones, not only are they at an angle, but they're also tilted slightly. So it's like you have that compound angle and it's very difficult to measure between centers. So I did that. And then I'll show you here in a second what I came up with. All right, so this is what I had came up with. This is concept number one, basically. Um, the alignment wasn't quite perfect, so once again, went back, took some better measurements, readjusted everything, and I ended up making this plate significantly smaller because there's no reason to have this much adjustment. So. Um, I did go ahead and print the the rubber mount in here too, just so I can kind of eliminate that uh, any stack up of errors essentially. So in the end, what I had came up with is this. So I'll put the subframe motor mounts in this thing and I've got my foam mock-up block in there as well. So you can see, um, made this plate that actually attaches to the motor or this is the mount itself smaller and then the actual motor plate is significantly smaller too um, yeah I did uh, end up getting some good measurements on this thing and I was only like two millimeters off center from having this engine straight up centered in the engine bay that's what I had originally made it to anyway so I figured huh what's the difference? I'll just make it straight up centered. What's two millimeters? It's not gonna make much of a difference. So both of these are symmetrical. Um, they're just mirrored. So each one is the same, but this is going to be made out of sheet metal, which let me get this thing out of here and we'll take a closer look. All right, so this is the finished concept. It's pretty much 
multiple pieces that will be laser cut. Um, once again, I remind you just I have the mount actually printed on here just to avoid stack up errors. And so these pieces will all be laser cut and I'm going to make a jig to align these things. And I've got some countersunk holes in there for fixturing and I will uh, weld them together. So they're gonna go on the engine just like you would assume, just like a normal set of motor mounts would. And then this will still allow a decent bit of adjustment front to back. So you've got, I think, a couple inches front to back, which might be enough to make a difference for some application. Um, it does clear everything, including the starter on the other side at full position. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for right now. Um, so the next step is to get some uh, laser cut pieces, make a jig, and go from there. So I'll make a follow up video whenever I get that part done. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share. Thanks.